So what is happening, people? Hey, today is Friday, May 28th. It's right before Memorial Day weekend. Happy Memorial Day weekend to everybody. And uh, well, I'm going to do something a little different today. So I'm going to go over four places that you can find crappy as they transition into their summer patterns. And one of those places is brush or trees in deep water. Some people call them mats. Some people call them hurdles that you can find in the lake that either occur naturally or someone puts them out. Uh, rocky points, bridge pilings, and uh, any other underwater structure like stone structures or something that's man-made, buildings, cars, uh, stuff like that, old bridge pilings that are actually under the water. And not only am I gonna talk about those, I'm gonna show them to you on the live scope. Now, back a few weeks ago, maybe a month ago, somebody commented uh, on the channel. I was showing you guys, uh, you know, some of that underwater structure and how the crappy were relating to it. And, uh, you know, they made the comment about uh, more explanation. So I got to thinking, if you've never seen live scope in action, you really don't know what it looks like. What does a fish look like? What does brush look like? What does a log look like on live scope? So, Today I'm going to show you and we're going to take time on all four of those areas that I just discussed and we're going to look at them in depth on live scope and I got my little pointer here. Uh, you notice I got my big camera set up only live scope and uh, we're going to take a look at them and we'll point out some crappy. Uh, I'll adjust the live scope in so you can really see that. Uh, logs on the bottom, brush piles and uh, I'll just let you guys see. So if you've never been exposed to live scope, you're interested in it, maybe this will help you. I'm gonna also go over my live scope settings. Now, hey, you guys have had live scope, probably know more about it than I do. This is just my suggested settings. This will give you a starting point uh, to set your live scope. Now, I leave my live scope on green screen. That seems to work the best for me. Uh, they have multiple colors you can set it on. And uh, anyway, whatever your choice. Some people are colorblind, so different colors uh, show up better for their eyes. So anyway, hey guys, let's get right to it and take a look at this brush. The first place I'm at, I've almost floated against the bank. I'm back in the cove off the main channel in about 16, 18 feet of water. I'm on some brush. That's the first place we're gonna look. And uh, let's go out here and take a look at this brush out here. Get back at it just a little bit. As you can see here, here is a tree along the bottom here. And you can see my live scope. That's why it's moving my live scope. See how far that tree runs? Now let's take a look at that tree right there. See, here's the butt of it here. These spots right here are fish. Let me zoom in. Those are fish. All those signatures right there are crappy or some type of fish that you see across the top right there those are crappies and you can see it's a bunch all along the bottom of this structure right here and let me move it and you can see how this is the log running right here along the bottom i'm gonna back this out just a little bit and you can see that there's fish hanging out underneath here this log now if you'll notice on these top side right here See that signature? That's a bigger fish there swimming off, possibly a crappie. So there you can see, let me back out with the camera here. You can see that. So now I'm gonna go one step further. Go down here, click menu, forward range, up. And let's go on up to about 20, let's go on up to about 20 feet click done. Now I normally do not uh, go 20 feet normally unless I'm really trying to figure out something. So you can see you get greater detail on the log. So the log lays right about across the bottom. And you can see I've set it on forward range and see I'm getting a greater detail of this log along here. And you can see the fish is kind of hanging out up underneath it right here. See these fish? 
but that's a little bit greater detail of what that screen looks like. See, that's a big signature of a fish. That's probably a, it moves like a bass. Sometimes you can tell. So I'm actually floating over top of the log now. As I turn the live scope, that's actually looking behind me. There's a good detail of the log there uh, in here. And you can see all the fish down low up underneath this log here. So that big fish up there probably is a bass in those crappy. See this big fish right here? That's probably a predator fish right there moving along. See that big signature? See how big it is? Probably a big catfish or striper or something like that. See how big he is? Here comes another one in right here. And those crappy, if you noticed, have dug in up underneath that brush. So you see the first thing we looked at was Okay, so you see the first thing we looked at. Now this is a big bush. You can see it's about 16 foot deep right here. All those bright signatures in there are crappy all around the edge here. And I don't know if I can zoom in on that. That is a bush. You can see the base that's standing up. It's probably got some type of flotation device in it. But all of those signatures that you see there, the bright signatures, are crappy. You can actually see them moving around, swimming. And this is uh, probably a willow. Still got leaves on it, but you can see the definition of it. And you can tell it's pretty big. Let's back out. Uh, you can tell how big it is. And this is in the same cove. It's right beside of uh, that tree we just looked at. Two types of brush actually in the cove and this for curiosity we ride over it uh, there's no wind and we're gonna just drop straight down right there and just and boom look at that we got a we got fish right there you can hear him flopping around and boom it's just that easy when you come in here finding brush uh, And uh, one just bumped at it. Now, since that tree comes up within, uh, looks like six feet of the surface, that's a pretty tall tree. That's why it's got so many crappy around it. Uh, so, you can just see how many fish hang out in a, in a brush pile, 18 feet of water, off the main channel, back in the cove. Now, I'm gonna crank up, I caught maybe five fish off of this. Uh, it's a lot of smaller fish. And uh, anyway, I wanna take time and show you guys uh, this other structure. So we're gonna run down the lake and I'm gonna do the same thing. We're gonna look at this different type of structure. So stay with us and we'll go to the next structure. So uh, what we're on now is an old man-made structure that's under the water. It's an old mill tower and it comes up it's, it's actually in about 42 feet of water. And it actually comes up about 20 feet off of the bottom and rises in the water column. And there's fish that sit right on top of it, all down the side of it. And then it transitioned to standing here in the deep water like this. It comes off the backside and then it gradually slopes out. It's got, looks like some rocks or part of some old columns from buildings or anything, but it's just full of fish. As we progress into the summertime, they'll start holding more fish. <clears throat> so anyway, let's take our time and look at this, and I want you to see it and study it a little bit, and then I'll point out, like I did in the brush, same thing, fish, the underwater structure, and you can see the different anomalies that uh, make up this structure. Um, so as you can see, there, I've got, my, I've got my live scope set in about 40 feet of water. So there's the edge of the structure here. And as you can see across the top are some fish. I'm gonna move this live scope around because I've gotten right 
over the top of it. Now see, as I turn the live scope, this is the back side. This is the back side of the structure, as I was telling you about it. You can see how it progresses down the stair step uh, into the water here. I'm gonna back on up just a little bit more of the structure right here. This is the edge of it. Here's the 40 feet of water. Here's the top, actually the top of the structure here. And I'm gonna zoom in again. I'm on 40 feet, I'm looking out. I like looking at 40 feet. I've learned myself uh, how big uh, certain size crappy are at 40 feet. And I'm gonna get right on top of this. Now we get greater detail. You can see the wall coming up here. It looks like they built the wall to help hold water. And you can see the fish sitting, that, all those are crappy, sitting right on top of that wall right there. Those are crappy. And as you study this underwater structure, you'll notice that the crappy may like to hang out more so on one side of the structure or not. See, I see a couple of fish down here on the side. Now we're looking straight down. This is looking down the lake. This is looking north. There's your face side. It looks like the crappie are sitting here. I can actually see some crappie down the side of that. Crappie will brim one uh, along the side of this. If we can see it. See this brush right here? See, I, this is sitting right behind the column. See if we can get right on top of it. It looks like it's pretty old. It's coming up 10 feet. Uh, let me zoom in. That is a brush pile somebody has sunk right behind this column. Now the other day it was more fish on this brush that would bite. There it is, you can see the tree running along here. Let me back out just a little bit. I don't want to distort it, but you can see this brush somebody has sunk right behind this column here. And you can see these fish suspended. Uh, those are pretty big fish. These could be catfish. I don't see the amount of fish in this brush that I saw the other day. There was a lot of crappie in this brush. And then there's that brush back there and you can see the fish in the brush. Uh, that's probably a better picture of it right there. Yeah, there's the brush pile right there, guys. That's what I was looking for. See all the fish in that brush pile right there? There's a lot of brush there. As it turns, see it turning right here? That is a pretty good sized brush pile. It runs all the way over here. Uh, that's part of it there. Well, just think a hundred years ago, somebody was actually move, using that mill there beside of this old creek or river channel right here years ago. That's pretty amazing. Now it's under the water and hey, and we catching fish around it. So that's man-made structure in deep water. The next we're gonna move to is a rocky point and I'll show you kind of how the crappy, if they're still there, how they're related on that rocky point. And crappy necessarily don't have to be always be around some type of wood structure. They can be around any sort of structure. So hey, stay with us and let's go look at that. So we're gonna do this next. Uh, we're actually out on a point and I'll show it to you. And I found this back a few weeks ago uh, out here and I was amazed at how many fish was out here on this rocky point. And what happens is it comes off the bank and it slopes down and it comes out, flattens a little bit. And then it's these huge boulders under the water that kind of cascade down into the main channel. Uh, so as you can see, there's the bank line behind me. And uh, the water, it, it slopes down like this. And right in front of the boat, you know, there's huge boulders right here in front of the boat. So let's take a look at that. Now, one thing that makes this point good, I'll point this out. See how this water's deeper here? And then it comes up. And it comes up, and fish can transition from 10 feet up here all the way down to here. And let's just take a minute and look around on this point. See a crappie hanging out right here, 20 feet of water. There's some fish suspended. So right here, I'm coming up on the 
very top of it and look at the crappie this is what I was looking for it's 25 feet of water but look at the look at the crappie stacked up right here uh, let me get a good shot of that so you got crappie here right out on this lip Then you got them across the top. Then you got them stacked up here. Now that's real quick while we're on top of it. I'm gonna go to I'm gonna go out to forward looking to 20 feet so we can get a more of a detailed look. Alright, that's looking at 20 feet. So boom. See all the crappies right here? The wind's going the wind's beginning to puff me a little bit, so it's a little harder for me to sit right on top of them. Seeing you is this little flat right here. You got some fish. Crappy love to sit up on top of a flat like that. The school of crappy right there. See them? See if we can zoom in on that just a little bit. All those signatures are crappy right there. Turn it back just a little bit. That's some pretty good signatures right there too. So normally, I wanted to fish these fish and we might have to drop a lure in there. I dropped my buoy marker right here. See, here comes a fish in right here. That's probably a catfish to the left. See the fish to the left coming? Coming right up in the bottom here. Right up by these fish. So normally I would drop my buoy right here on the end of this point and fish around that. But you can see those fish working on the top of this rocky point. And there goes that bigger fish. That's probably, that could be a bass working that point there. I'm gonna turn it back. All right, let me spin around here. So that is a rocky point. Now you can see how many crappie is there. I only had a 16th ounce jig on. It took me a little bit to drop it down. Dropped it down three times, boom, got bit three times in a row. But you can see when I scan back out how those crappie were related to the point, not necessarily setting on the point. They were out over deeper water beside of the drop off, maybe 20 or 30 yards away from it. So many times crappie will move up in the water column. There may be structure on the bottom that they're relating to, or they may be relating to structure on the bank, like a, like a blowdown. They may not necessarily be in the blowdown, they may be in open water close to the blowdown. It's kind of like uh, when you go in a restaurant, you keep your back against the wall and watch the door. You know, basically you have a place to retreat to and you can, uh, nobody sneaks up behind you. Kind of the same concept, uh, cause there's pre a lot of predator fish here. So last but not least, we're gonna head down to the bridge. Bridges are areas that we can see physically with our eyes that hold a large amount of fish. The only drawback is they get a lot of pressure, but you can be very successful around the bridge. And we're gonna take a look at the bridge pilings and a lot of you are gonna say, Sam, I've seen that time and time again. I don't need to see that. But what I want you to see is not each bridge piling is the same. There may be a log floated against the front of it that creates a little more structure. There may be current to one side. One side may be deeper. So we're gonna ride down here. And I noticed this the other day, as I went across those bridge pilings, some of the bridge pilings held many, many more fish than other bridge pilings. And so, we're gonna go down there and we're gonna take a look at that and then we'll finish this uh, episode. Now we're gonna have to deal with some traffic noise so I'll try to speak up. Now, the first thing uh, that a bridge does is holes has shade. Crappy love shade. So you can see in the screen there comes the column. That is the front side of the column. We're gonna look down the column and you see this, uh, there's a brace under the water there about 10 feet under the water. We're gonna look. So you can see fish like to hang out up underneath that brace. Can, there's your cross member there you can see you got a couple of fish hanging right out on the top of it there. There's some fish in the brush pile here. I'm going to turn off of this and the next piling, if we're looking, this is the 
pylon that you see right in front of you. I'm looking at that pylon right there. And that's what it looks like. I see some fish hanging out right in front of it in the shadow line. Um, that could have been a school of shad. You can see how it's stair-stepped. Here, here, and there's a column. All right, now look at this right here coming up. See this pillar right here? <clears throat> Let me zoom in on that. See that right there? That is a school, there's your crappy right there. There's a large school of crappy. Boom. There they are. They're over here on this shadow side. Coming past them. Boom, we'll look up. There's a column right there. Look right back down, and boom, there's a crappy. Right over here on this side. And a pretty tight school, too. A um, little bit better signature right there, two signatures. Hey guys, we're getting ready to end this video. I hope you've seen something in the video that you enjoyed. I hope you've seen something in the video that you also learned. We appreciate all the support that we get for this channel. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button below. Now, you don't necessarily need live scope to find this type of structure. You can do that on 2D sonar, and uh, you can recognize points, uh, the lay of the land. Uh, you can use side scan. There's so many different ways you can find this. And the reason I've done this video, I wanted you to be able to see it on live scope and see how fish relate to this type of structure and how they, especially like a bridge pilings, how they may not be on one pylon, but they're on another pylon. There are many reasons why crappy relate to different structure, different ways. Now, by no means is these four type of structures on any lake the places to look for all the time. There are many other places crappy hang out. We'll do some of those videos later in the summer as fish get a little bit deeper. But hopefully this helps you find fish on your home lake. And uh, you know, I, I'm at Kerr Lake today. I'm in the Longwood section again. I've been coming down here. This will be my fourth trip. This will probably be my last trip. I'm going back to the Clarksville area and I'm going to spend about four trips down there. And what I'm doing is gaining knowledge uh, out on the lake. As fishermen, that's what we come for. Every time I come to the lake, I gain some form of knowledge, whether that's the uh, fishing method, fishing lure, and um, Hey guys, as always, we appreciate all the support we get for this channel. We appreciate you subscribing. Hey, share this channel with someone who likes to fish, likes to hunt. We appreciate all the support we get for this channel. Hey guys, and you remember, it's a wild life, and I'll see you on the water.